I wasn't going to really get into this, but I but I guess now is my my might as well be as good enough time to do it. There's a fellow by the name of Chris Russo. He's known as the Mad Dog. He used to be a very prominent radio talk show host in the New York City area. He has since left New York and has a radio station on Sirius XM. And he made controversy last week by saying that uh, <laughs> he, when people, he was wondering why there's not more black people on talk radio. Uh, and, and, and they got audio of it, but I, I won't get into the specifics of his audio. But basically what he's saying is there are no black radio hosts, quote, worthy of doing the job. Uh, he later backtracked and said there are no black radio hosts worthy of doing the job that have applied. Needless to say, he's trying to reword what he said, <laughs> but it's a little bit too late. Um, you know, and, and there's audio here of what he said. I won't get into the specifics because I, I just mm -hmm. don't want to give him that kind of airtime time, but yeah. when you think of a person who in his mind has such kind such engraved racism in his mind where he would say that there is no black people worthy of being a talk show host we ain't even talking about playing you know what I mean? Like wow. when you yeah. talk, when you when you talk about playing, you got people who play and people who mm -hmm. analyze and coach and general managers. The Giants got it. The New York Football Giants, my football team, we have a black general manager. Okay, the New York Mets, who I don't root for, have have had one as 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 well. So we can do that job, but we can't talk about it. Yeah, I own a radio station, Chris Russo. I think I do pretty damn good, Big Ruben, I and everybody that's down with us. So. I guess the point I'm making is that kind of engraved racism mm -hmm. that would make you think that no one of color, it ain't just us, but of color can do the job. When you hear that kind of stuff, I mean, I don't, I mean, again, I, don't, I won't call you out on what you do for, for a living, but when you think about that, I mean, we all work in the corporate world mm -hmm. and we know that the corporate world ain't run by black folks. So wow. in, not even in theory, in reality, we, work in, we live and work in mm -hmm. their world. What's your thoughts mm -hmm. when you hear something like that? I mean, I, you know, taking it a little bit of the example, because I know you were like, well, don't say what I do, but I'll just put it to you this way. You I can work say it in, if you want to. Well, I just I didn't want to say it unless you were oh. okay with it. <laughs> well, I know what yeah, you do. Yeah, I know what you know what I do. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, know too. Yeah. Um, but no, but working, I do work in corporate America that happens to um, have the genre of, of education. And from my position and what I do, um, I can count on one hand, including myself, of how many of us are in a directive position. And to me, the challenge that I am seeing is that, you know, we understand our place, per se, um, and you do your due diligence and you do your job. Um, and we know how... Um, when is the right time to say something and when is not the right time to say anything. Um, but I don't go into explicit conversation with my boss, you right. know, whether you're black and white, male or female, right. you know, you're not my boss, Marcus, right. but I'm here working with you. Right. Um, and we have a relationship outside. Right. But if you were my boss, boss, right. and I worked nine to whatever with you, you're not going to have uh, Toyana's time right. too much of what I did in a weekend. But that's just how I was taught and how I was raised. Right. And I think a lot of times a lot of employees think they need to be their boss's friend. Right. And that's not the case your right. boss does not have to like you they don't have to know you if you're hired and they're paying your paycheck their expectation of you is to do your job and if you're not happy and it's sad to say and that's how most corporations are if you're not happy you, you need to go somewhere else roll out you know roll out i mean that's corporate america but that's everywhere now well i think that too often you know and i'll be crass for a minute people shit you know shit where they eat you yeah know what, you know what i mean like you, so you, you right. can't do what you do at work, what you do at home, and vice versa. Absolutely. Um, but as far as the respect thing, you know, mm -hmm. it's one thing when you try to kick it with your boss, but it's quite another when you know, when you find out the way that the the, the Los Angeles Clippers and others found out that their boss doesn't even respect them 
Mm-hmm. Solely because of their skin color. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a tough pill to swallow, but at the same time, you keep it moving right. because you know right. what you bring into the table. And that's when I was going to directly piggyback exactly what you're saying about the radio announcer who who supposed to say that there is not um, any <laughs> African Americans um, in South in well series radio. Um, and I beg to differ. I think that. Maybe it's a different genre, and he's not familiar with it. I mean, if you're not in that circle to where um, that you are out there and you're putting your ear to the ground to hear what else people are talking about, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. If if I had to pick between talking about Justin Bieber and Molly Cyrus versus Al Sharpton and, uh, you know... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Al Sharpton and, and President Obama, you know, I, I probably would kind of gravitate to want to talk about that right. because I can identify right. culturally with those individuals, even though I am familiar with Molly Cyrus and Jason Beavers. And I think that this um, announcer that you're talking about, I think he's naive, but also I think that he wants to be, um, what's the other young guy? Crazy hair, glasses. Crazy um, glasses. Howard Stern. Oh, yeah. I think that he's he and Rush Limbaugh. I think that maybe he's just want to have that type of title that they have as well. Well, I mean, here's what saying, I'm saying: do anything to get it. Rush says crazy, outlandish things, partly because I am pretty confident that he believes that stuff, but I also know that he's smart enough to know that he is going to rile up the base of people who. Mm-hmm already don't like minorities which mm-hmm. i hate every time i say that i'm trained and I'm brainwashed just i try to fight against brainwashing but i'm brainwashed myself we're not minorities we're the majority we're just less of us in this country overall in the world it's more black folk than it is absolutely than, than there is white folk but his audience is an audience that feels that they have been upset by the mm-hmm emergence for lack of a better term of people who of color yeah taking jobs oh we hate affirmative action (laughs) you know it's not fair you know you know the white man is now persecuted which i think is the craziest thing that anyone could think that's the base that rush limbaugh has you know howard stern just say crazy shit he just that's what he does him and robin they have always been that way Mm -hmm. when you think about somebody like chris russo though i've listened to him for a long time and you know, he's not my guy. I don't care for him as a sports radio guy, but mm-hmm. I think he's an example of someone who has that kind of ingrained, you know, racism that they may not even realize that they have. Hmm. You know, there is privilege in being white. Absolutely. And, and, and I think Absolutely. that when black people say that, particularly when they say it for white folk to hear them say it. It offends white folk because they think, what yeah. do you mean? What, what do you mean there's privilege mm-hmm. to being white? There just is. is. And unless you're not white, you don't get it. There's plenty of white folk that get it and they live off of that privilege. Mm-hmm. But a lot mm-hmm. of the liberal white folk who understand or, or try to understand what we as black folk and other people who are less in numbers, it's better than saying minority. I like right? that better. Less in numbers than you are. You know, we mm-hmm. understand that you want to be helpful and we want you to be helpful and we want to work with mm-hmm. you and all of those kinds of things. But there's certain things that you just don't get. One of the things that you don't get is by you having white skin, you automatically have a certain level of privilege. Yeah, and I think the expectations um, and the, what's required of you yes. is not going to be um, under the microscope yes. as if anybody that was Absolutely. minority. And, and and I know you don't like it when I do this, but Marcus, I have to throw in there too that, you know, I'm a female, you're a male. Yes. So it's worse for it's you. It's worse for me. Okay, so we, you, you actually agree with me on that one. Thank you. 100%, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so, I mean, so if you're a minority and you're a woman... Um, I come from a matriarchal type of family, so I get it. I see what my sister goes through, and I see, Mm -hmm. you know, the things that my mom went through and all of that kind of stuff, and and I'm 100% totally get it. And for those white folk who think that we say, you know, and and I don't say that you have privilege for being white in a derogatory, I say it in a factual way. Yes. Because I question if any of your fathers sat you down on the day you got your driver's license Mm -hmm. and gave you air quotes the speech you know did you get the speech 
<laughs> Maybe as an individual you did, but culturally you didn't get it. Culturally you 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 did you just didn't get it. I'm sorry, you didn't. And so it's different. You know, it's 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 different. You get the benefit of the doubt. We don't get the benefit of the doubt. So, you know, that that is part of what the outrage is when we look at Donald Sterling and others like him who say the things that they say. And I have people that question me, Toriana, who when he did not at any point of that conversation that I heard use the N word and people, black people who like to always defend white folk, I, I call those scared Negroes, they told me, well, he didn't use the N word, so what's the problem? Me personally, uh, what he said was so much worse. Yes, yes. I, I thought, I think maybe he watched 12 Years a Slave and, <laughs> and, and in his memory bank, it was just a repeated. Yes. And, they, and he saw Brad Pitt. Yeah. You know, he's like, oh, this is a movie. And, and, and I think that he just got stuck on some of the scenes in, in the movie. I really do. Because for anybody to come out your mouth, and I think that's the most hard. He didn't have to use the N word because to me, that hurt me for him to say, well, I feed them. You know, I buy them cars. I, I, I buy them clothes. It sounded like them slavery. Food. Didn't it didn't sound I, like a slavery. Yeah, reference? I was waiting for, you know, the the National Negro Anthem to come out. <laughs> you know, sweet low, sweet cherry. <laughs> I was waiting to. Were we supposed to sing that or something? And y- yeah, it's a boss. Yeah, you know. But then again, and you know, I like to stir the pot a little bit. Do you think it's a slight, just a little slight conspiracy on it that now that Ma- Magic Johnson wants to buy the team? Well, there's a lot. Says, there's a under kind of a. There's a lot. You know, I mean, Magic was drama one of the first. to get. He was one of the first, but I, you know, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't quite go there with you because. Anybody that's black that's got money is coming out and wanting to buy. I'll be honest with you. When you came in here, if, if you know, mm-hmm. I was going to ask you during the break if you wanted to put your money together so we could go buy oh. the Clippers. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, we, we, we can talk off. We talk later. We can talk later <laughs> about that. You know, but, I mean, seriously, you Absolutely. had Magic. You had Oprah. You had yeah. Puffy and Rick Ross and, and, and Kanye. And but why we had to wait Craig until and that to do that, though? Why do you think we had to wait well, it's a for good, that comment it's a good, to it's decide a, it's to do a good it? Old boys club it's a good old boys club and it's one of those clubs where you can't get in unless they let you in and even with donald sterling had he made these kinds of incendiary comments prior to owning the clippers he would never own the clippers i can tell you that because i know Mm -hmm. the fact that he's already in okay he's in he's a problem he's making us all look bad we got to figure out how we can get rid of him it's going to be hard as hell for them to get rid of him but they're going to try but you can't make them kind of comments then get a team you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You can't be a billionaire, then get a team, mm-hmm. and be and be bl- right. a billionaire black and then get a team. You know, there's got to be some kind of extenuated circumstance, like Bob Johnson, for example. Yeah, who, with the Bobcats. With the Bobcats, yeah, yeah. He ended up getting a an expansion team. He mm-hmm. created that team. That's how he got it. Yeah. You know, Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. That's how he got in. Shaquille O'Neal, Absolutely. who's now a part owner of the Sacramento Kings, is, Sha- is Shaquille O'Neal. That's how he got in. Jay Z is Jay Z. That's how he got in. Yeah, Magic Johnson Nelly. used to own part of the Lakers. That's how he got in. Let somebody be a black billionaire, and there's some of us out there, not a lot, but some of us out there that <laughs> we ain't got to shush. I want the world to know that we got some money out there. But, but, but you know, I don't want to make this mm-hmm. disguise fall when black people can't buy a team. It's not, even, it's not even like that for me. But I also want folks to understand that there are obstacles in our way yeah. that make things difficult for us that you don't see. And just because you don't see it don't mean it's not there. Well, I, 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 even though, you know, this was a negative, I actually like to turn it into a positive to let our young, you know, men and young women know, okay, now you guys, I'm hoping now you see that there's only a very small percent of you are going to be able to go to NFL and NBA to play as an athlete. But look who's really getting paid. You have an owner who owns the team. Yes. All right. So he is a billionaire. Yes. The basketball players and football players are underneath that. Yes. And they're multimillionaires. Yes. You know, the ones that sit on the bench, they start off at 500000 on up. Yep. You know, maybe a million dollar contract yep. and that's no, it. You're, you're, your numbers are right on point. So, <laughs> you know, so th- I, I hope it shows our, our children, yes, you can be that if that's what you want. But really... To really own to own the team means you've won the prize. Yeah, yeah. You won the prize. Yeah. And 
it's sad that you know it's 2014 and um you know this man is setting his ways i'm i'm a little confused with the relationship that he has with this young lady ain't um, no confusion there well well no what you confused about not confused at you all me but explain that to you no please god no <laughs> my, my innocent ways he's 80 she's 30 you, you really need me to explain <laughs> that to you <laughs> he's a strange wife you know everybody's one big happy family yeah but um ain't no explanation there his wife on on the first day she called him everything but a son of god but two days later she was seen having dinner with him oh but they also said that she has herself in the past have had some friends racial no had, had some racial conversations herself really Hmm. Mm-hmm. As far as you know, the the, the whole so thing. So two peas in the pod. Two peas in the pod, and she called him the worst person in the world for making those you know incendiary racist racial comments. You know the crazy part about it is, you know, we talk about the money that's out there. I mean, Absolutely. if you are someone who bought a franchise for twelve million that's now mm-hmm. worth somewhere in the neighborhood of five hundred million, and you paying your biggest star twenty, twenty five, thirty million dollars. If you pay somebody thirty million dollars, you pay one guy thirty yeah. million dollars, can you imagine how much money you must be worth I'm if you can you. pay one dude thirty yeah. million dollars? Contract them that I mean, it's unbelievable. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Hey, you know what? The, every time I talk about this, I get a little bit fired up. Let, let me. I got two more. Let me go to two more. Mm-hmm. These two, I gotta say, I gotta, I, I gotta tell you, sister. You mm-hmm. gonna say what the hell? Okay, I'm you, ready. You know, if you drinking water or soda I, or anything else, it's gonna come sip. out your nose, uh, folks. You know, so eight zero four four zero two <laughs> two eight nine three is the number to dial to be down with us here on Ain't No Has Step with Marcus J, the flagship show on Legacy Internet Radio with yours truly and my sister, Miss Toyana, is in hey. the building holding us down tonight. I right, listen. This story is about a teacher, right? Okay. Who was charged with giving a <clears throat> student a lap dance? A lap dance. You got <clears throat> criminal charges being filed against an Aldine Middle School teacher. They're saying an inappropriate relationship with a student. Middle school. Now, we've heard stories mm-hmm. of teachers having issues with high schoolers and all of that kind of stuff. According to court documents, the inappropriate relationship involves giving the student almost a four-minute-long lap dance in front of the I'm, whole I'm, class the that was recorded on video. What the hell? According to statements in the court documents, there was physical contact with the student in what the class. The, the student told investigators that Ms. Smith said, quote, I love you, baby. Happy birthday towards the end of the dance. Smith told investigators that the class convinced her to do it for the student's birthday. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. What I, the hell? Now, I got a picture of her. It's a sister. I know. I'm, I, that's why I'm like, a sister, really looking at her. She's a sister. And, and, you know, for people who no think, better. think people think that we just, one of them shows, and what we do is talk about all oh, the white men, the white folks, what white the folks, hell? Straight, all that kind of stuff. Look, listen, y'all. We act a damn fool, too. White people ain't the only people that's crazy. We crazy, too. This is a sister, oh y'all, who gave a kid, and she 42 years old. Okay, she gave a student a lap dance in a class. So y'all, really, really? Wow. You can even know what to say, do you? I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I okay, mean, I set it up so it's, we can discuss the story. But now that I'm thinking, I'm gonna set it up. What, what the hell is there to talk what about? What the hell is hot? Well, well, first of all, okay, this is a middle. This is a middle school teacher. Do they not do background? Ch- I mean. <laughs> Do they not do background checks anymore or drug tests anymore? Or I, I, I think, one, looking at her picture, if, if, you, if you see this young lady, the picture I'm seeing, I'm just very upset about because she's smiling. You know, it's a picture of her just getting out with her bond. Um, and she just seems to just be just so nonchalant and just very coy about it. And like, oh, well, you know, yeah, I did it. Um, but that bothers me because... Your class has that much control to tell you, the teacher, oh, Mr. this would be fun if you gave him a lab dance on his birthday. A lab dance. And you're 42 two years old. I'm 42 years old, and I know that's just ratchet, and yeah. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> that's just, you know what? 
Really? Ratchet? Yes. Her I next might job. be the first time we ever said that I word know, on this show. Like, that's awesome. Say it again. Say ratchet. Ratchet. There you go. <laughs> this is ratchet. And I mean, you, you know what? She, she That's her time now to go to a strip club if she want to be a stripper. I think that's where her next career should go. Just yeah, but go I, on. I mean, but I'm looking at the picture to you. And just I don't, I don't think they got they look, look, the strip club. Though. Look where she's got, where she's at. Yeah, she can be a, a wonderful she, stripper. You think she can? Maybe in a house where you might have Stevie Wonder and Ray <laughs> Charles, and <laughs> <laughs> that might be your clientele. You know, but in all seriousness, she gave a student a lap dance. Hey, look, man. Okay, you know what? If you were a fourteen-year-old boy. You're 14 year old. You're t- what? I'm not a boy. Well, how would how would you handle that at a, as 14? When you were 14 years old, when I was 14 years old, my teachers were in their what late 20s, and I thought they were old. Right. They looked old to me. Well, I, I didn't. I I didn't have a teacher who I thought was hot until I was in college. Miss Miss Odom. Well, was, good. We got that in common. Most Oh man, Miss Odom. Anyway, college. yeah, I won't. I won't you said college. I was See? in college. College. You know, whenever I talk, Not middle school. Whenever I talk about Miss Odom, I just usually end up getting tongue tied <laughs> and saying things gonna, that get me yeah, in trouble. We're going to have her come on the show. I'm going to look her up for you. I'm going to look her up. Can you look her up? I'll give you her first name offline. I'm going to look her up for Please you. Please do. All right, anyway. Miss Odom, I ain't no stalker crazy person, but you was fine, and I paid attention because you was the teacher. But anyway, when I was 14 years old, my teacher was Miss Weiner. And Miss Bolden, and 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 Miss Timmons, oh God. and they weren't the kinds of people that you would want to. They weren't Miss Odom, <laughs> so yeah. I'm not quite sure. It's a fair question for me, but in all seriousness, I, I just didn't think. I mean, I had a gay teacher. I didn't know it was gay until I was, you know, out of high school. I didn't realize he was gay until I was like 20. It was like, yeah, you know, such and such was gay. I was like, for real? But that's just, my point, right? That's, yeah, and I'm agreeing with the you. In, like, you the just innocence. Didn't, the innocence, I didn't even pay attention to it. It's like, like, oh, yeah, like, they're weird. Yeah. You know, I had a fourth grade teacher that smoked chalk. But that's different. Chalk. But see, I, he was but, smoking chalk. But it's different now, Toyana, because of the, a lot of things with these kids today is so far advanced from what we are. See, I'll be 40. I'll be 40 years old in a month. You're 42. So we're in our 40s. And our generation honestly believed that on December 31st, 1979, the last generation of normal people, you know, were born. Because on January 1st, 1980, and everybody after that, I'm telling you, the benefit of the doubt is gone. Like, y'all crazy until you show me that you're not. And so I I can't trust that a 14-year-old kid in the classroom watching his teacher shake her ass on his classmate doesn't realize that there's something not right about that. Like he might think that it's okay. It's okay. That's and that's a problem because what he's in middle school. So is is this going to be some of the, an expectation when he goes to high school? If he goes to college, all the teachers going to shake their ass. You know what I'm saying? Classroom? Or if he has a job and he has a a, a female boss, My boss is going to shake her ass. For them? <laughs> like really? You know? No, I'm with you. I'm a, I'm a hundred. And then is, is the parents not mad? I mean, I know they someone had to tell, of course, but I'm just kind of skimming through. Is, is the parents not involved? Because I don't see any parents I, 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 involved. From in what this. I from what I understand, they are leading the charge towards getting this teacher in the kind of trouble that we know that she deserves to be in. Okay. And so there are, you know, the parents are, you know, rightfully so outraged by the story, but. You know, it's just scary to me because, you know, this is someone who is charged with teaching our children. There's a lot of, you know, I shouldn't say a lot. There's some teachers out there that lose their damn mind and act crazy and do these crazy things. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. Michelle K is checking in. She's hey, saying Michelle. peace to everybody. Joy and Michelle are both very speechless with this story. Michelle, <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, what would y'all do? Yeah, what yeah, would you do, Joy? What would you do, Joy and Michelle? What would y'all do if y'all heard? Let this us story? know. You know, hit us up in the social media. Would you page break it? Or, would you drop it like it's hot? Oh Lord, please, I know that they wouldn't drop it. Like, <laughs> I hope they wouldn't drop it. If you listen to this show, then hopefully you got the kind of mentality that tells you that you do not need to be dropping it like oh it's gosh. hot. Ain't no half stepping. What the uh, hell? With Marcus J. Uh, last thing I want to get to in a second before we take our first break of the night. Now, if you think that story was a little bit out there, then mm-hmm. I just I just got to tell you that the next one is probably going to make you 
to kind of bug out a little bit, especially if you are a female person. Uh, this is a story about a woman. She had a gun. It was a legal gun. She had no business with the gun. And when they came up on her to check her and find out what she's doing with the gun and all that kind of stuff, she hid the gun. Want to know where she hid it? <clears throat> um, is it called a JJ? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a and woman in Tennessee. Paradise and, and Garden of Par- Eden. Garden of Eden slash Paradise. This woman hid her gun inside of vagina y'all tennessee woman this is oh i got an oklahoma woman that was 2013 i'm sorry you You mean to tell me there's more the oklahoma police bust a woman with a loaded revolver hidden in her for jj that was in 2013 this one is in 2014 you mean to tell me there's more than one story oh wow there's july 10 2013 so see i got an actual article but you're looking at google (laughs) which is because i see your tablet here you're looking at google which tells me that there are a lot of stories out here of people doing this like really you have a gun and you yeah and and this this particular article says it's a 22 so apparently her butt one woman had the gun in her for jj and meth in her butt but go ahead <laughs> <laughs> i really want to talk about this chick no i think She's i want to talk about your chick more <laughs> I'm She's talk, really talented. i want to talk about your chick more than my chick like seriously <laughs> like but it was a 22 so apparently she ain't used to having much <laughs> i mean like, like like i mean it's one of them stories where we say what the hell it's not really anything to discuss like how do you discuss it you just kind of put it out there we laugh about it and then we move that along ain't no half stepping with marcus J. we're gonna take our oh first God. break of the night and when we come back we got a whole lot more you got your sister miss toyana you got you guys on social media and you got yours truly and michelle yes ouch that is very very crazy marcus j toyana <laughs> and michelle who thinks is crazy ain't no how stuff with marcus j be back in a few minutes stay with us <laughs> 